Hello all and welcome to a completely unexpected Thursday night beer review which I am dubbing the I probably should not drink I'm breaking my own rule for myself um, but I was given these two beers by my father and I'm going to do a comparison review like I said for health reasons I probably shouldn't be drinking but what are we comparing today we are comparing Coors Light and Bud Light so damn near water so, risk is minimized, I suppose. Or at least that's what I'm telling myself. We'll see tomorrow how badly I feel <laughs> about this. So, I'm surprised I never, you know, have done this before. It seems like a thing, it's just been something on my mind for years. I've never done it before. I've reviewed Bud Light once many, many years ago when I started this channel back up in like 2014. I've never reviewed Coors Light, but these are two of the most popular beers in America, along with Miller Light. And it would be interesting to go and see what a very insubstantial beer is like. So both of these are 4.2 ABV, and Coors has apparently decided to put nutritional information on this. So... Um, 102 calories. Yeah, so pretty light. <laughs> well, they are light beers, light adjunct lagers. Colorado, St. Louis, I believe. Who knows where they're actually brewed now? They have probably contract brew all across the, um, you know, they probably have breweries set up across the United States since, you know, they're so high volume -ish. And it's been years since I've drank either of these. Um, my dad was at a barbecue. He bought this for his um, men's group, you know, and um, yeah. Well, let's start with one that I haven't drank in over 10 years. That being Coors Light. By the way, both of these are fairly fresh. Um, expiration dates are in the beginning of 2023, so still several months off. So I'm going to be opening these one at a time, not doing full pours into the glass because I want to build up a big head for both of these for a proper... Actually, no. I can probably pour, do a full pour for each. Okay. So let's start with the Coors Light, shall we? I'm going to pour that one out. I'm going to give it a vigorous pour because these heads... I know the heads on these don't last long at all. So, a pale yellow, but not the palest yellow I've ever seen a beer. Carbonated, with a fizzy to frothy white head. That smells of uh, metallic notes. Slightly crackery hops, very faint. I mean, slightly crackery malts, very faint. And grassy hops, also faint. But really kind of dominated by that metallic off note. At least to my nosing. I'm kind of overly sensitive to these kind of flaws and macro lagers that some people call taste notes. And there's a bit of wet stone in there too. Okay, on to the Bud Light. 4.2 ABV. Giving this a fairly vigorous pour here too, but since this is a smaller glass, can't overdo it. So, also a pale golden yellow, very pale. Seems to be a bit more carbonated than the Coors Light. Malts have a sweet kind of corny smell to them, which is odd because I know that their product line is, their adjunct is not corn, no added corn syrup. They use rice as their adjunct. So it's kind of interesting that the nose there kind of has a slight corniness to it and there's no corn. I guess I should just call it a sort of malty sweetness, I suppose. Hops is less apparent, but still there, but less apparent than the Coors Light. 
generally a lot sweeter smelling than the Coors Light. Coors Light smells drier. Head also recedes quicker as well. Okay, side-by-side -side coloration. Don't read too much into this. Well, this is um, a bit of a wider glass. Yet, I would say Yeah, I would say definitely that the Bud Light is slightly darker in coloration. This is the one right here. And I forgot my water, as usual, just a second. Not that you really need to clean your water to clear your palate. You don't really need water to clear your palate with light beers. Okay, sipping cores. Watery. Very, very watery. Pretty clean finish. There's a top note in the finish of malts. Front, very slight hot bitterness. Goes down really easy, because it's like water. Just slight skunky off note to it. Which is not light, light struck, because it's in a can. Top note is of that very mild malts and minerality. Mostly dry, just a very slight sweetness there. Okay, on to the Bud Light. Much more carbonation bite. Though that may have more to do with this being a wider glass. It allows the carbonation to escape a little bit more. Honestly, honestly, this one is not as watery feeling in the mouth. But at the same time, there's less taste, oddly enough. There's a slight bitterness up front. Doesn't really continue. Finishes clean. Um, it's not as watery as the Chorus Light, but it's still very watery. Kind of skunky hops um, in the top note there. Again, very mild, very subtle. None of these taste notes I'm describing are big. They're very noted. They're very, they're very imperceptible almost.
There's also a little bit more of a sickly sweetness to the Bud Light. Man, it'd be nice if I could taste any malts in in this at all. You know. It's like somebody took like a good lager and just watered it down. Okay, back to the Coors Light. Like I said, much more watery mouthfeel, but oddly enough, there's just a bit more malt and hop flavor here. After a while, that sort of metallic off note in the nose kind of disappears. It just, I guess you get sort of used to it. You can also see why these things are usually drunk ice cold. Um, Yeah, it is so weird to me how the one that has a pretty perceptibly thinner body has more of uh, um, a flavor and a top note than the one that has a sort of thicker mouthfeel. Could I do a blind taste on this? I think I need to do this several times. You know? Um, drink it several more times like this side by side to really, really get, well, it's not muscle memory. Well, the tongue is a muscle, but it's not the muscly part of the tongue that is being used here. But the taste buds, get a taste bud memory and a nose memory for it. But yeah, definitely could. As it warms up. The Bud Light has, oh, the skunkiness is becoming kind of overbearing. Well, there's not really much skunk here. There is kind of like a slight, very slight fruity off note. It's not really, I wouldn't say fruity, I, I guess it's another type of skunkiness. I'm not cleaning my palate now because I really just want to go ahead. Yeah. So if I was going to do a blind taste on this, and I think that comparing light beers is like the ultimate in sort of blind tasting for beers just because of how characterless they are meant to be, you know. Um, I say that the Coors Light stands out a bit more. The thinness of the body, 
and the minerality would be the points I would be looking for. You know, I think the coloration just from ambient light wouldn't be able to, to um, really have me determine it, nor would the carbonation. And the nose is really so brief on these because the head is so short that you really would have to go and do this pour test a few times to really suss it out. So kind of just relying on the taste right now of the palette and the top note. Um, I would have to go and say, yeah, I would definitely be looking for that thinness and minerality in the Coors Light. And that god-awful I don't know, there's just like an off skunky note to the Bud Light in the top note there. It says not strong, but it is kind of lacking in the Coors Light. Coors Light has its flaws, um, but it's not slapping me upside the face with it. I mean, I get it when I have it, when I'm drinking it, you know, from the nosing, but it doesn't really appear in the top note. Um, or on the palate. Whereas this one, well, yeah, it's more in the nose, but when you're, you know, it's just so much stronger. I'm kind of blasted right through this because, you know, it's sort of, it's not a very substantial beer. Um, neither of these are, but you can kind of tell. The Bud Light here held his head much better than the Coors Light. Again, don't read too much into it because of uh, the difference in glasses. Um, which one do I prefer? Coors Light. I wouldn't seek it out, though. I would pick anything else. I would pick the full-bodied Coors Banquet or a full-bodied Budweiser over any light beer. I, I'd pick any. I'd pick a full-bodied beer over any light beer any day. That said, if you put these two beers in front of me, I would go for the Coors Light. Yeah, dogs. Um, <clears throat> they have six of them. Six of these things, man. Six of them. Um, it's interesting here. Yeah, well, maybe not. It's just interesting how the head kind of kept on the Bud Light. I wouldn't prefer either of these. Um, this was this was a really interesting experiment. From a single go alone, I don't know if I could really go and do a blind. I think I could with several times. You know, if I did this maybe about five or six times, I could do a blind on this. As it is right now, it, it would be a bit iffy, I think, you know. Just knowing how palettes are, and I really want to emphasize this, your palette perception can change very much just on how you're feeling. And I'm not feeling too great right now, honestly. What you've eaten in like the past few days, just, you know, your mood almost can also affect it as well. And that's why I think it's very important that when you're doing these sort of side-by-side -side comparisons of things that are, are of a similar style and of a similar character, that you do it multiple times, you know, so you really got a handle on it in case you ever want to go and do it like a blind challenge. And I don't think one time is enough. I think you need to do it several times. Like I said, maybe about five or six times, I would feel really confident that I could 100% pass a blind test on this. 
Though ideally, I would like to have at least two other light beers here. Um, you know, I think that blinds a multitude, you know, having more is better than less. But of course, too much means that you start getting a little bit too much alcohol in you. And that is its own trouble in and of itself. Um, you know, that, but a single one by one comparison is probably the most difficult kind of blind tasting. You know, because there's less anchor points for you, you know, less reference points for you to kind of draw upon. And, yeah, you can kind of tell that I'm losing my vocabulary right now. And that's mostly because um, I haven't drank in a while. Um, you know, two light beers. Wow. <laughs> but I do think, I, I, I am really, you know, this... This has given me a lot of thought, to, you know, because um, this is something I'd like to try to do for videos in the future um, with family members um, and with friends um, is blind tasting. Because I think blind tasting is really how, you know, you go and test your palate, how perceptive your nose and your tongue is. And your eyes too, because visualize, you know, um, you know, looking at coloration, head retention, that kind of stuff are things that do matter. Um, so yeah, these are all very important things to consider. Um, and I'm losing my train of thought, so I'm going to kind of wrap it up. And I'm not so much losing my train of thought because of the beer, but. For other reasons that you can hear. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'd like to go and continue this in the future. It might be a while just due to the various reasons I've mentioned in previous videos. Um, I'd like to go and do a book review in the future. I'd like either not my most recent review, but like, um, you know, the next Next few reviews, I'd like to go and include like a book review because, uh, you know, other than there's there's four things in my life that I absolutely adore, you know, that kind of define me, and that is drinking alcohol, smoking pipe tobacco, reading books, and cultivating chickens. And sadly, one of those is out of my life right now. And unfortunately, it is the one that is the most emotionally satisfying for me, which is raising chickens. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to include books on my channel. And this has been like the longest video I've ever done because I'm just kind of rambling now. But, you know, this kind of, this has really sparked me for some reason. Um... And yeah, it reminds me of something that I want to do when I even started the channel. It was to go and do blind reviews, which is very difficult to do when you live by yourself. But this style comparison here of two very similar beers is something that sparked it in me. And I guess I need to wrap it up now because I've just been rambling on for almost half an hour. I mean, God knows you guys don't want to see a half an hour video. I go and watch like the other beer review channels. They usually do it within five to ten minutes tops. I need to go and start cutting down on my time. But yeah, that was Bud Light and Coors Light, people. Good for comparison, not good for drinking for pleasure. And that is your beer comparison review for this Thursday night. Cheers.